Structural geology is looking at the deformation of rocks. And one of the key components for deforming rocks is the stress, which is the force applied to the body. In this video, we are going to look at the three stresses that we will see inside the earth that can cause deformation to a rock. Now, for simplicity, we are going to look at our body, our material, in the shape of a cube. So when we have stress, the first one is compression, squeezing more in one direction than others. So we live in a three-dimensional world. That means this cube can be squeezed up, down, or vertically. It can be squeezed horizontally from the left and the right, and it can be squeezed horizontally sort of in the in-out orientation. So let's go ahead and use the example of the cube being squeezed more from the left and the right than it is in the other two directions. So I'm going to put some arrows on here to represent our compressional stress and we're going to give them a symbol called sigma 1. Sigma represents stress, 1 represents the maximum or greatest stress. So we will have three uh, sigmas, sigmas 1, 2, and 3. Sigma 1 again being the maximum, 2 being sort of the middle stress, and 3 being the weakest stress. So I will put them on here. So that we have, again, the in-out, the left-right, and the up-down. So we have our maximum stress coming from the left and the right. Our weakest stress inside of the earth typically is vertical. So if we squeeze this cube from the left and the right, and it can sort of flow and change its shape, where's that material that's being squeezed from the sides going to go? It's going to expand into the weakest stress field. So the shape of our cube, after it's been deformed by compressional stress, I'm going to draw in red. And what we will see is that our cube has changed its shape. It has gotten thinner from the sides where it was squeezed, and it's grown taller. Again, stress squeezing from the sides, causing deformation, causing our block to change shape. And again, it expands into the orientation of the weakest stress, sigma 3. The next stress that we are going to look at is tensional. And tensional, instead of squeezing, we can think of as pulling. So this time, sigma 1 is still going to be the left-right horizontal orientation. But this time, we're going to be pulling to the left and the right. I'm going to put sigmas 3 and 2 on here. Same way as last time, sigma 3 is vertical. And sigma 2 will be our in-out orientation. Like so. So this time, we're going to be pulling the cube from the left and the right. Mm -hmm. And instead of material going into the sigma 3 orientation, because we're pulling, this time material is going to be pulled from sigma 3. So our deformed block is going to get shorter in height and wider on the sides. If I can draw. So it does help to be able to draw cubes and shapes in 3D. 
But you get the idea that we have pulled material from the vertical as we stretched it or pulled it sigma 1 to the left and the right. The last stress that we are going to discuss in this video is shear stress. Here we're looking at compression, but the important thing is instead of having our stress field where they meet each other, like compressional stress, now they're going to be offset. And what happens is when you offset that compressional motion going towards each other, you create shear, where one is sliding past the other because of that offset. So I'm going to put the arrows in our stress field, sigma 1, 2, and 3, on here in a very specific way. So let's put sigma 1. Sigma 3 is still going to be vertical, and sigma 2 is still going to be our in-out. So the, really the only thing that's changing is sigma 1. So this time, we see again sigmas 3 look the same, sigma 2 looks the same, but here sigma 1, instead of meeting, is offset. So the top of the block is going to go this way, the bottom of the block is going to go that way. And what does that do to our cube? Is it causes it to shear or to offset. So shear stress, we're looking again at sliding sort of one half the other. These are the stresses that you should be aware of to successfully complete the lab for structural geology in an intro physical geology class.